It was revealed on November 22nd that the often delayed James Webb Space Telescope has experienced yet another delay. This is not the first time Webb has been delayed either. The telescope, which is being jointly developed by NASA, the European Space Agency, and the Canadian Space Agency, is planned to succeed the Hubble Space Telescope. Stay with us, as today we are discussing the reasons for its delay. First up, who was James Webb, and why does he have a telescope named after him? James E. Webb was a career politician, serving as the 7th Director of the Bureau of the Budget from 1946 to 1949, Secretary of State from 1949 to 1952, and Second Administrator of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, from 1961 to 1968, under JFK and Lyndon Johnson. It has been said that Webb, during his role running the space agency throughout the majority of the 1960s, did more for space exploration than any other government official in history. For this reason, the U.S. government decided to name the new space telescope after him. Nice! Webb was instrumental in the build-up to the moon landings in 19. 1969, and without him, it's questionable as to whether they ever would have even taken place. Although he wasn't with NASA when man took his first step on the moon, he left the agency by 1968. It was Webb's support for space science that ultimately got the Apollo program and subsequent missions off the ground. His vision of a program that balanced human space flight and science is one that remains unparalleled today, and ultimately paved the way for the states to send probes to Mars and Venus. He was instrumental in pushing through a major space telescope, then known as the Large Space Telescope scope and pushed NASA hard to focus on this, which has ultimately led to the discovery of thousands of exoplanets, amongst other things. So it's only fitting that the new telescope bears his name. So why is it delayed again? As we know, NASA has again and again delayed the launch of the JWST, and we can report that it has suffered another delay, the latest in a long line. The telescope was due to leave Earth's atmosphere on December 18th in just under a month's time, but has now been pushed back until December 22nd at the earliest. What a great Christmas present this would be for all involved if they are are able to get it into space before Christmas. There is apparently an issue with the attachment of the telescope to the rocket that will carry it into space. NASA said a sudden, unplanned release of a clamp band, which secures Webb to the launch vehicle adapter, caused a vibration throughout the observatory. We certainly hope this unplanned release doesn't happen in space. The telescope has now been in development for 25 years, first being conceived in 1996. NASA predicted it would take just 12 years to build the successor to Hubble, but in 2005 they basically had to start again before reporting that the model had been completed in 2016. It had not, in fact, been completed and took another three years before it was even fully assembled. The pandemic didn't help and meant there were more setbacks for the JWST, but it seems as though we are on the home straight now, which is great news for humanity. So, what can it do? The new telescope will have much improved capabilities than that of the Hubble, which is saying something as the Hubble telescope has been a major success. The JWST will enable astronomers and cosmologists to observe some of the most distant goings on in our entire universe, which is super exciting for the field of astronomy. Stephen Hawking would surely be proud. It should be able to give us more information on how the very first galaxies were formed and provide scientists with a better understanding of potentially habitable planets, which we might need to explore if humanity carries on the way it's headed. The JWST can technically take us back in time. The idea is that the further away something is, the further back in time we are looking because, as we know, it takes light a long time to travel to us from its source. The telescope will be capable capable of giving us a view of some of the most distant galaxies in our universe, which is incredibly exciting and will undoubtedly reveal completely new things, as of yet unknown to science. This is because of JWST's ability to view the universe in longer wavelength infrared light. And with this incredible new technology, it's been speculated and more or less confirmed by scientists that the telescope will be able to see back almost to the beginning of the universe, around 13 billion years. We're living in the future, kids. What do you think they find? Let us know below. And what about the design? Well, as you might imagine, this is not like designing a simple homemade telescope in your conservatory. Oh no. The design for this groundbreaking telescope is incredibly complex, and the primary mirror, which is called the optical telescope element, consists of 18 mirror segments, which are in hexagonal shapes and made with gold-plated beryllium. The mirror is almost three times bigger than Hubble's mirror, so you do the math on how much better it'll be. The JWST will observe our neighbors, hopefully, and a lower frequency range from long wavelength visible light to mid-infrared light, which means it can observe redshift objects, basically really old and far away stuff. This is an upgrade on Hubble, as the old telescope does not have these capabilities. For the telescope to work to its maximum potential, it must be kept in Arctic light conditions, so NASA will deploy it in space with a large sun shield protecting it from the sun's rays. They will also coat it in Kapton to keep it around negative 223 degrees Celsius. That's a little cold for 
us. We're glad we don't have the job of maintenance on this beast. Uh, More on that later. This is obviously going to be one of the most important scientific advancements in space history, and we are super excited to see what discoveries the telescope brings. So what's the difference between a space telescope and an Earth-based telescope? Stay with us to find out. There are advantages to having a space-based telescope, and one of the biggest ones is that it does not have to battle through the Earth's atmosphere and all its different weather systems. This means that they can ultimately look further into space and give us a better idea of what is going on. The JWST will not actually orbit Earth at all like its predecessor did. It'll be based in the Sun's orbit, one million miles away from the Earth at what is called the second Lagrange point, or L2. There are some obvious problems, though. Maintenance on the telescope will be pretty much impossible as the telescope will be situated far further than any human has ever traveled in space, so we'll not be able to fix these issues. So why are the scientists putting it in a place that is so inaccessible? Well, there are a few reasons for this. The telescope is highly sensitive to heat, so one of the best ways to keep it cool is place it way out of the Earth's reflected radiation path. Another reason is that the Lagrange point is in an area that is highly effective at keeping objects in place, as the gravity of the Sun and the Earth at this particular point are working in harmony. It's great that humanity has got to the point where they know such amazing things about space, and we feel that a big discovery could just be around the corner. What do you guys think? Let us know below. So what else has NASA been up to? Stay with us for some Armageddon-type stuff. This week, NASA will attempt to do something never before done, or even attempted. The American Space Agency plans to interfere with the direction of an asteroid by slamming a spacecraft into it. The asteroid is not believed to be on a course to hit Earth. The aim of this act is to test a planetary defense system that could be vital should we ever be in the position where we are threatened with a humanity-ending situation. We hope it doesn't inadvertently deflect it into our path. Earth is always being hit with space debris, most of which burns up in the atmosphere, but now and again, some bigger stuff gets through our atmosphere. Think back to the meteor that landed in Russia a few years ago. That wasn't particularly big, but could have done a lot of damage had it landed in an urban area. The asteroid that killed the dinosaurs around 66 million years ago obscured the sun's rays from penetrating Earth, essentially killing around 95% of all life on Earth. An impact like this would almost certainly kill off human beings, and the powers that be have decided they need to defend us from nature's plan. Thanks, guys, but we like the idea of Bruce Willis heading up there to drill a hole in an asteroid and throwing a nuke in a little better. What is your take on this planetary defense system? Let us know below. Thanks for tuning in today, guys, and don't forget to swing by next time. How about sharing this video with your space junkie friends? Bye, guys.